He's a poet, an iconoclast. He's a champion for Singlish and a Singlish champion. He's Dr. Gui Li Sui. Welcome, Dr. Gui. Hi, Valerie. Hello, thanks for joining us. So um, the first question is going to be quite simple and I think it cuts right through to the conversation, which is um, what is the role of Singlish in defining our Singaporean culture? Mm. Um, there are a lot of things you can say about the qualities of Singlish that is very much part of who we are. Um, it is um, multilingual, hinting at the multicultural roots of Singapore. Uh, it is full of uh, in-jokes that is uh, very much tied to the social life of Singapore. Um, it has uh, a lot of, um, I guess, uh, witticisms, a lot of um, uh, uh, bantering, very much the way we speak, uh, a lot of um, cutting down people, bringing people to size, a kind of um, trying to, well, accommodate. Um, that's, that's, that's also very much uh, part of who we are. I think usually when we say that Singaporeans are not, I mean, or, or at least we hear people say that Singaporeans are not funny or, uh, or, that, or, or that we have no sense of humor. I think people don't understand that all that is actually packed into Singlish, uh, packed into the way we understand and distort language. So there's actually more intelligence in the way Singlish is spoken than we give it uh, credit for. So you've been in this um, line of work for more than two decades now. How has Singlish changed throughout your, the span of your career? Uh, a correction here, I, I didn't actually deal consciously with Singlish for two decades. I think this is the thing that, uh, uh, that, 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 that I think even the authorities find puzzling in my case. They thought that I only started dipping into it uh, recently or, uh, or um, I was starting to finally show my academic interest in it. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. It's really it's something I grew up with. My family spoke Singlish, uh, um, uh, and mm -hmm. Frank, but, but to, be, to, be, to, to be precise, uh, we don't all speak the same language, you know. I mean, I'm not sure whether that's true for everybody's family, but for mine, my dad speaks English, but he, in terms of dialect, he speaks Teochew. My mom speaks Teochew, but she doesn't speak English at all. Uh, she doesn't speak Chinese except what she sees on television. She understands, but she doesn't, she doesn't speak it. So you can only communicate to her primarily in Teochew. My, my sister is Chinese Ed. And so mostly we communicate in, um, I mean, when we gather together, it's Teochew. Um, but if I talk to my dad, it'll be English. If I talk to my sister, it'll be Chinese. If I talk mm -hmm. to my mom, it'll be Teochew. But I'm, I'm not sure whether that's the composition of some of uh, a, a lot of uh, families out there. But uh, then that's, that's how Singlish evolved. It evolves because we have at a very basic uh, structure of our, our linguistic uh, thinking, uh, mm -hmm. something that's already multicultural, at least bi bilingual. Uh, um, uh, when I say bilingual, I think this is also something you picked up in school. You're taught at least two languages. Uh, and so the capacity to switch between two languages is already pretty strong. It is a quality of Singaporeans and we tend not to understand and appreciate that. Uh, this element of being able to code switch. We talk, talk about it as if, oh, we cannot do it. It's too much of a skill. You've been doing it since school, right? Mm, mm, that's true. I, I think that's, that's an excellent point because the idea that we can code switch is actually perhaps one of our, the defining qualities of our Singaporean <laughs> culture as well, right? Um, I do want to pick up on that point that you said about needing to, um, you know, language falling in and out of fashion. And we also talked a little bit about how it's a mix of everything. So there is a certain um, accepted structure, so to speak, right? It's like when people understand they, you, you want to say hall, everybody knows what hall is, right? So yeah, and then it's a weird, wrong way of saying it as well. Exactly, mm -hmm. right. So how do you think this structure comes about? How do you think this, the idea of like hall needing to fit in a certain, a certain way and the fact that hall needs to be used in a certain way uh, actually elevates English yeah. as a proper language rather than just... Yeah. I think a lot of these words, uh, they definitely were originally borrowed, borrowed from somewhere, right? Uh, La, you know, from Malay or some people say even Arabic culture. Um, uh, um, uh, ha, ho, I think it's in Cantonese. Uh, you know, um, um, they did definitely come from somewhere. And there are also a cultural context to which why, when they come over. I think those Cantonese-related 
M particles came about the time when we were actually showing uh, our, our Cantonese uh, TV series, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and we don't do that anymore because of the speak Mandarin campaign. But prior to that, that was there, you know, and that kind of introduced a lot of the funny aspects of the language into the way we speak. And then after that, the second, phase, the second part is when it started to mutate. That means being used by a particular community and being familiar with the, the, the way it's strictly used, people start to take liberties, right? I mean, and so the word start to evolve its own contextual meaning. Uh, that is very natural. I think people who insist that you have to follow the meaning of the original language are missing the point. Every language that's absorbed by another language uh, starts to take on the life of the community that uses it in relation to the language that it is uh, uh, using it in, right? Uh, and it changes. I mean, all loan, lang all, all, all loan words have that history. I mean, for example, when English take French words, you know, after a while, they stop having the strictly French meaning. And so uh, things like ha, hey, ho, la, le, you know, we, we start to have a kind of uh, range or, or, or differences in the way it's used. So, for example, a good example would be la. If you compare the way it's used in Singapore and the way it's used in Malaysia, uh, in, in their Manglish, which is the Malaysian uh, version of Singlish, uh, um, it's, it's, it's very different. Yes, it's still very much restricted to the way it's understood and used in Malay. Whereas uh, in, Sing in Singapore, we tend to use it la in increasingly more ways. I think even 20 years ago, I don't remember it being used in uh, so many ways that we do today. Today, we use it even to um, itemize objects, right? You know, say, uh, I want to go here, la, there, la, there, <laughs> you know, or I want to go uh, A place, la, B place, la, C place. La. How, how, how do we end up using it like that? You know? I mean, that again is something that involves. So, I'm curious. So what was the previous way or the Manglish way of using la? I, well, it's, it's, it's the one that most people think it, they, they know basically as a, as a, as a kind of a, 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 a kind of affection, a kind of way to just uh, suggest that uh, to say something and then end it on the note of, of kindness or politeness, something that, that kind of um, brings down the tone from it sounding too demanding. I think it's, 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 very, uh, it's a very uh, 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 limited way, I guess, uh, or, or very, very particular way of using it. Okay, that's interesting. Um, you know, one other point that we also talked about was you kind of grew up speaking Singlish, right? But nowadays, there's this sensing, you know, if you are younger, if you're in primary school, secondary school, um, or even as you grow older, right? If you, there's a fear of being seen to only speak Singlish. If you can speak good English, and then you can code switch best, you know, lagi best. But Singlish is still relegated as, as that subpar language, if you want to call that. Yeah. Uh, Will this change and should this change? It, it, is, it is changing. Um, we haven't lived the worst of it. I mean, uh, there was a time when actually it, I, it, it was pretty much a, 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 not just frowned upon, but actively uh, institutionally uh, uh, taken, uh, taken down. It was attacked quite, quite fervently. Uh, from the 70s onwards, uh, the very strong point that was made by the educational minister then was not to have Singlish used in school. The language of education has to be English, which is perfectly fine. But I think that started to evolve somewhere in the 90s into Singlish becoming the thing to be blamed for bad English. So when people speak bad English, oh, they say that that's because uh, they are speaking Singlish. Well, the problem here is that because for decades we have not learned to differentiate between Singlish and English, and then we have inculcated this sense that Singlish is bad English, uh, it has that reputation that whenever someone speaks bad Singlish, uh, bad English, it has to be speaking Singlish, which is wrong because uh, uh, Singlish, you know, the rules and there, there are proper rules of, of, of saying it in a way that, you know, bad English doesn't, you know, and bad English is just contorting. You know, you can, you can say something that's bad English that's also bad Singlish. If you say, uh, where I go, where I go, that's bad English. That's also bad Singlish, right? Because Singlish, the way to say it, uh, go away. Go away, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, like you, drop, you drop your marker. Hey, go away. You don't say, hey, go, where go? Where go? <laughs> you say that, that is not, that's not English and that's not Singlish also. There is, prop, in other words, there's really proper syntax there. Mm -hmm. There is a way in which we will understand you and we understand that you're speaking Singlish. I mean, there are many variants of this kind of, of points that I, 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 there is to be left to Singlish to kind of make sense of. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. 
the issue here is firstly that they're not the same. And secondly, if you speak less Singlish, it doesn't mean that you speak more English, better English. Uh, this is also a bad assumption. The idea that if you persecute Singlish enough and people stop speaking it, mm. do they speak good English? Mm -mm. I think that's an interesting perspective. On one hand, thinking that you need to have good English to actually participate, use and contribute to Singlish, right? But on the other hand, there is also the conventional argument that's been put off by the government, right? Or at least by English teachers, is that if you are going to continue accepting Singlish, continue using Singlish, the, even in good Singlish grammar and syntax, you might mix it up with English and therefore get a bad English grade. Well, the, the way to understand, understand this is numerous. Now. Firstly, you know, um, if you teach people the difference and you teach them how to understand them differently, then there wouldn't be an issue. You don't say the same thing about Chinese and English. Right? You don't say that, oh, if people start to speak too much English, their English is going to get bad. The whole premise of being able to speak bilingually is that you know both categories and when to use one and when to use the other. I think if we have taught from the start uh, young people to be able to know what is proper English, and you don't even have to teach Singlish, you know. Once they know what is proper English, uh, um, they will slowly understand what is Singlish, you know, and what is neither category. I think this is my journey as well. I mean, as someone who uh, uh, know that I'm speaking one form of English, at, uh, one, one, one form at home, and then taught uh, English at home, even though I was not uh, uh, taught Singlish, I realized that the rules are not the same, you know, I'm not saying the same thing uh, and there's a very localized way in which we are even using English words. Uh, and, and that's important because the funny thing is that there are people who claim to be speaking English when they're actually really speaking uh, Singaporean English. That means uh, English with meaning they're only specific to Singaporeans and we understand it. Words like fetch, for example, which is used in a very diff different way from the way it's used elsewhere. Uh, revert is the one it's called of course, always cited and you know, people say, oh, it's the, it's the Indian English. No, but it's also in Singlish, uh, Singaporean English, you know, I mean, we have that as well. Mm. And there are all, all these words, they're not necessarily technically wrong because if you were to start to look into the, uh, even OED, uh, it is expressly even included there after a while, you know, because they want to be inclusive as well. They want to say that English is not just fixed to, to be spoken by people in the UK but it has its adapted form as well. So they want to acknowledge that. So it's actually in the dictionary there, you know. I mean, so people who say that, oh no, don't don't use revert in this way and that way. Mm. Guess what? You know, you're going to have a problem when you start to look up OED because it's, it's, it's actually an okay way of using it mm. now. Uh, uh, you know, so yeah. So so that's one thing I guess we, we, we have to we have to be uh, conscious of. Um, and I think the government has not necessarily uh, uh, been deaf to uh, mm -hmm. the... To, to the clamor for a kind of a more open idea of language. And even educators these days um, in schools, they are a bit more enlightened. Linguists definitely have been pushing for a long time that uh, I know when you teach uh, uh, English, you know, you make a proper distinction. That's the best way ahead. Uh, uh, so you said something along the lines of uh, expanding English and also getting a sense of recognition for Singlish, you know, in the global stage. You, you translated the little prince into the Lita Tungku, right? Uh, it's the first literary classic to appear in Singlish. Uh, what uh, yeah, was your motivation yeah. behind it? Yeah. Book plug. And <laughs> that, there's definitely a, a, a shift after the book. I mean, after, after um, not, not this book specifically, but after the other book, Speaking Singlish, that came out in 2006. Uh, two years before Little Things, uh, Little Things um, That one itself was a result also of what has happened to me uh, when the government wrote against my article in the New York Times. So one thing built over, over to another, but there's definitely a shift this time round in the Singlish debate. I mean, the Singlish debate has been going on for decades. Right? I mean, every time it comes up, you know, uh, it, 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 it always ends in kind of irresolution. Uh, you know, we just kind of let let it be and all. But I think this time round, the stronger positive response from Singaporeans towards Singlish has kind of um, changed things a bit. And also the idea that we are post 50 already, 
and then we should have a more enlightened view about language and what is ours. And especially by this time, we, I guess, uh, unconsciously we have realized, we have, subconsciously we are realizing that we have lost a lot of things that define us. And the way we have lost these things is that we tend to always clamp down, destroy the thing, and then realize a decade later that hey, we should not have done that. I mean, this translation of Little Prince came pretty uh, incidental. It's not out of my sheer wish is published with a German company actually, mm. um, not Singaporean. Um, precise, not for, for a lot of reasons. La. I mean, uh, it's, it's because um, Walter, who's the publisher, uh, actually came to me. He was a former linguist um, uh, um, before he became a publisher. And he, and he said, well, I've heard your, your, I read the stuff you said about Singlish, uh, you know, and I, 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 I've heard a bit about it. and." If it is really a language as you claim, then surely it should be able to be translating. It can be. It can do translation, right? Mm. And say yes. And he asked me then the obvious question: um, Well, has anyone done it? And I said, Well, not not really, because you know, um, we unfortunately are still stuck in a very infantile level of talking about English, whether uh, it is allowed or it's not allowed. You know, it's. <laughs> We're not even going to the level of accepting it and then moving on. You know, there's so many things you can go on. And so he said, wait, okay, well, I got the rights to the little prints for translation. Do you want to translate the book? And uh, I said, okay, I'll do it. I mean, I, I, I can see the possibilities of what good it is, you know. I mean, I think we, have, we should finally be done with asking, I mean, saying ultimately uh, silly questions like, uh, oh, is Singlish a real language? Or is it just Chinese people, all Malay people trying to speak English? You know, it sound, it actually, I, know, I don't know why people sometimes still say that kind of thing. It sounds incredibly classist and racist, but still you keep, 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 keep getting this, the idea that, you know, are these people who are stuck in either their own communities too much, they cannot speak proper English, so they speak English. Um, they, they don't sound, they don't realize how condescending, how, 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 um, uh, uh, um, offend, offensive that really actually sound uh, uh, because it, if, if you just open your eyes if you just only listen it's spoken across the board even even people who are really properly high, highly educated so what anyway I'm hearing, mm, yes yeah what i'm sorry. hearing actually is is that you're very passionate about this and to a point that um I think it's not common, right? It's not common for you to, for people to look at Singlish and go, you know what, this is a language worth preserving. This is something that I really want to, you know, dedicate your, your life to celebrating. So what was it that even motivated you to do that? Maybe what was it that motivated you? <laughs> I, I don't think I dedicated my life. I, I'm a poet and I will always consider myself dead primarily. Um, okay. this, this is something that, you know, it is, it is, um, it happened to me, right? It happened to me, and I could close my eye and just let it slip, or I could just stick up with it, you know? Um, something's come into your life, and you realize that you are at the moment, at a particular place, in a particular debate, uh, and you have the power to change that debate, uh, the term of term of debate. I think if it was somebody else, you know, the argument could be, oh, you don't know anything about language. What? Why, why are you, you know, why are you even saying this? Oh, you are not uh, uh, this and that. Whereas I find that, you know, precisely because I understand language, I study language, uh, um, I know literature, I mean, and, 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 and what goes into the literary uh, 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 nature that uh, makes language possible. Uh, knowing all these things, and, and of course, the, of course uh, it, 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 uh, uh, the poetic possibilities in language. Uh, when I know all these things, and yet, you know, I find myself stuck in this debate where people are still killing something which I thought they should really... It would be past this by now. Yeah, no, they, 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 should, they should really protect it, you know. It's not always somebody else's problem, uh, mm. firstly. And secondly, that recognizing it for what it is. You know, this Singlish right now is what English was 80, 800, years, 800 years ago, right? Uh, when it was just absorbing words from around cultures if we give it enough space, we could have on our hands the English of the future. Mm, you said something very interesting, and I think that would be my last question because we're mm. really running out of time, but it's been an enjoyable con conversation. Um, the poetic quality of Singlish. Mm. Uh, I think one thing I love about languages is that across different language, there's a certain term that usually expresses a hard to translate 
uh, quality, right? Like Schadenfreude in German, or, mm. or you said Sibesien in Singlish. Right? It's very hard to translate. So, so what is what are some one or a few of your favorite Singlish phrase that expresses that same uh, je ne sais quoi, so to speak? Yeah, no, no, there, there are a lot. I mean, I mean, one of the sure signs that uh, it is its own thing is when it starts to have its own idioms and metaphors, right? We have, we have quite a lot. I mean, when I was young, the one that was that really stuck is NATO. I don't think people what use that? that anymore. NATO, NATO. NATO, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I, I don't think your generation uses that, that anymore. But my time was really, really big. I mean, of course, you may think it refers to the, you know, the North Atlantic, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Organization, but trade organization, but yeah. but it's, uh, it's, it's it's not that you know we use it to mean uh, uh no action talk only, right? So when someone is you no, know, I mean because that was our experience of NATO two hundred uh, twenty years ago, <laughs> you know they are always just having conversations and nothing happens. So whenever this happens among uh in a, in a community or something like this, oh they are just NATO or the government just NATO, uh, yeah it's it, you know it, it that that. that it, it shows certain understanding. It's not a stupid phrase. It precisely came about because we knew what NATO was not was doing or rather not doing. You know, there is a certain understanding there before the word could be used. Uh, I think these days there will be things like steady pum pp, right? Which again, you know, you it's, it's pum pp actually, but then it evolved again. It gets distorted. It becomes pum pp, which is the which the version that seems more acceptable now. Uh, which is basically to mean that you know you blow a whistle, right? You're, you're, you're so you're so you're so killer, you're so uh, 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 fantastic, so excellent that you know I, I'll, I'll blow a whistle for you. Given the different phrases in our history in relating to Singlish, uh, Singlish has become this 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 refuge for all these places to keep the words that are disappearing, to keep the ideas that are disappearing. You know, because as today, you know, more and more people are speaking English in Singapore. Uh, and so the, the, the old languages, the old way of speaking are dying. And so, you know, Singlish becomes the storehouses for um, our cultural imagination. That's true. And with that, uh, thank you so much for joining us at Incomplete mm. Questions, Dr. G. Okay. Mm. Bye. Bye. Bye.